It's Thursday, October 29. This is the news on PBCJ. I'm Carol Francis. We begin our newscast with the latest COVID-19 update from the health authorities. The COVID-19 death toll has now passed the 200 mark. Four deaths were reported over the past 24 hours, pushing that total to 202. The deceased are a 45-year-old female of a St. James address, a 34-year-old male of a St. Elizabeth address, a 90-year-old male of a St. Elizabeth address, and a 38-year-old female of a Westmoreland address. The death of the 38-year-old was previously under investigation. 76 more people tested positive for the virus. The tally of cases is now at 8,927, of which 4,175 are active cases. 50 recoveries were also reported on Wednesday, with that total now at 4,429. It was also disclosed that there are 15 moderately ill and 4 critically ill patients at this time. 109 persons remain in hospital. For the news on PBCJ, I'm Gabrielle Thompson. The Kingston and St. Andrew Health Department tested 620 residents and staff over a three-day period. 87 results were positive for COVID-19. 533 were negative. The 87 positive cases include 65 residents and 22 staff members. The positive cases are isolated and are being monitored closely. There are now 42 sites to facilitate priority coronavirus or COVID-19 testing for healthcare workers. Establishment of the testing sites forms part of the Ministry of Health and Wellness's welfare program for the island's public health workers. Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Christopher Tufton says 15 of the facilities are in the Southern Health Region. 13 in the Southeast Health Region, 11 in the Western Health Region and 3 in the Northeast Health Region. So these sites will give our staff members an opportunity to test on, on requirement and, and will give them a priority. The Ministry's welfare program for the island's public health workers is a one-year initiative aimed at bolstering staff's well-being in light of COVID-19 and its impact on the health sector. For which the total cost of implementation was 37.9 million over 12 months. Uh, the program is now underway with an initial offering of opportunities for rest and relaxation at a local hotel for team members at a local hotel and similar opportunities to follow in the coming weeks. He says there are other measures that will be unveiled. Some are already in place, like the additional uh, payment for, for the, the, the work that they do, and we will make that public over time. The five components of the welfare program are human resource management, psychosocial support, rest and relaxation, COVID support, and wellness. The health minister was addressing the ministry's weekly virtual COVID-19 conversations press briefing recently. For the news on PBCJ, I'm Simone Absalom. Jamaica's coronavirus COVID-19 response has been boosted with donations of respirators, medical masks and antigen rapid diagnostic testing kits valued at more than one million U.S. dollars. Shortages of personal protective equipment, PPEs, is one of the major issues affecting frontline healthcare workers who are responding to the novel coronavirus COVID-19. Vital protective equipment to provide a safe working environment for doctors and nurses working on the front line was recently donated to the Ministry of Health and Wellness by the British High Commission through the Pan American Health Organization, the World Health Organization, and the United Nations Multi-Partner Trust Fund. The PPEs include 90,000 N95 respirators, 188,000 medical masks, 80,000 antigen rapid diagnostic test kits, over 73,000 face shields, and nine oxygen concentrators. This is to protect uh, health workers so they're properly uh, equipped, both in terms of garments, masks and everything else. But most critically, what we have now are rapid test kits. Uh, our contribution is about 30,000, but there is another 50,000 kits here uh, from other donors. 
And this is one way in which we are addressing uh, the COVID uh, pandemic here in Jamaica. We've been working here locally as well with about 1.3 million pounds worth of direct support helping uh, deal with uh, domestic violence, dealing with border control protocols. And going ahead, I think you know we will be looking at the impact on the economy and, and other factors uh, so that we can work with Jamaica, uh, achieve, uh, if you like, a, a sustainable recovery. Once the vaccine is discovered, and we are hoping and praying that the, the, all the research that we're doing in the UK and elsewhere will come to fruition, uh, will be delivered uh, across the world. But Jamaica is in a good position now, having joined the COVAX facility, which means that it has a, an early stake in, in the whole uh, arrangement. So at the same time as we start to uh, deliver the vaccine to our public, Jamaica will be very much in line for that as, as well. We're definitely grateful um, for this partnership. This is, um, as I said, this is going to change a lot of things um, to be able to get the tests back in half an hour to know if you're positive or not. Um, so I, I think this is, this is a great partnership. The One Laptop or Tablet Per Child initiative aimed at bridging the digital divide was launched on Thursday morning at the Jamaica Stock Exchange. It is our collective effort to respond in the first instance to the COVID pandemic, but more importantly, it's our collective effort to reduce no, let me take back that word, to eliminate the digital divide in Jamaica. And I know many persons talk about the digital divide, but what is it exactly? It's simply this, the difference in access to technology that people who have money can afford compared to what poor people cannot afford. Eliminating that divide begins by the government and the private sector coming together, as we're doing here today, to put a laptop or a tablet in the hands of every Jamaican child, especially those families living near or below the poverty level, whether they are in rural Jamaica or in our urban centers. The Ministry of Education is not only providing the electronic devices needed, they are also providing connectivity. And by the end of November, if not before, we would have connected an additional 100 schools and would be working on doing so for the remaining 135 because we identified that there were 235 schools across Jamaica that did not have connectivity. At the end of all of this effort, what we want to see is improvement in the educational outcomes. There is to be a phased resumption of face-to-face -face classes for the academic year 2020. The school term had resumed on October 5. However, the modalities of teaching were online, remote, or broadcasting. Education Minister Favor Williams made that call at the Jamaica House virtual press brief on Wednesday. We intend to allow for the phased resumption of face-to-face -face classes in some schools for the academic year 2020-2021. The phased resumption will be done in accordance with Order 14 of the Disaster Risk Management Act. Based on the proposal, the current approaches, which is the online the audiovisual and the learning kit will continue to be available for all schools. For those schools not yet able to return to face-to-face -to -face teaching and learning, the ministry will be better able to intervene in a more deliberate way and channel resources to them so that in time, they will be able to reopen for face-to-face -face engagement. The minister outlined the reasons behind this decision. We want to acknowledge the challenges the lack of connectivity, no device or access to only one device by many children in the same household, the lack of online etiquette on the part of some students and you know, some teachers and some parents. We acknowledge as well the challenges of safety and security in some homes in which the parents or adult has to go to work and leave the children by themselves. We've heard about the high electricity bills 
help parents have to leave their phones while they go to work so that their children can have online access. We've heard the many complaints as well of how quickly the food in the fridge finishes. And, um, you know, and that happens when you have children at home for so many hours in the day. Schools have been physically closed since mid-March of this year to prevent spread of the novel coronavirus. The price tag on the infrastructural damage in East Rural St. Andrew and West St. Thomas is said to be hundreds of millions. A number of bridges have been damaged and there are reports of nine breakaways in Cedar Valley St. Thomas. The volume of rainfall that battered the island for almost a week has caused death. Dislocation, as well as severe infrastructural and agricultural damage. It is too early to give an estimate, but the cost to the country from the relentless rains will be staggering. The damage to our pipelines, the National Water Commission systems that we are seeing. We are here now on the National Water Commission system at Riverhead, Goat Ridge, in West St. Thomas. And the citizens are reporting to us that infrastructure is scoured and damaged. This is major infrastructure. We have been lucky enough to have the National Work Agency today look at nine breakaways. Now, nine breakaways, and we have not gone into Cedar Valley Division properly yet. Um, I'm in discussion with Minister Warmington for that tour. Um, we'll be going into Cedar Valley Division to look at Mahoganyville, Penn Line, Ness Castle, and coming down into the coffee lands, the Blue Mountain Hills. I'm expecting to see a lot more stress to our infrastructure. I'm very hopeful that the National Work Agency will be able to mobilize equipment to clean our gullies and our rivers so as to protect the structures, our bridges. A number of bridges in St. Thomas are at risk, including the bridge in Landui. A new bridge is, has been designed and is out to tender, and I believe the process has gone even further. West St. Thomas, between Cedar Valley coming down to Morant Bay, we know that the highway is under construction. Everything that we have seen there inclusive of in Funtill, where the citizens have on about six occasions been marooned. That seems to be proceeding now quickly. I am of the opinion, I'm not an engineer, that some of the designs will have to, based on the rain we have seen in the last, from end of August till now, some of the structures that have been designed may have to be redesigned to increase their scope and capacity. I share that concern and opinion. But I must say, as a member of parliament, the people have suffered. On our adjoining constituency, we lost two lives. All of Jamaica, we see it in West Mullen, we see the hills of Clarendon under stress. All of Jamaica is under stress from the rainfalls that we have seen. The possibility of landslides is a clear and present danger given the saturated ground. Broken water lines. Rapid increase in water levels in rivers and seepage of water are all signs that a landslide may occur. The forecast for more rains on the weekend have many worried. The threat of heavy rains associated with a trough will wreak additional havoc on the island's infrastructure. It could flood communities and undermine the banks of gullies and rivers. There is now a race against Mother Nature to shore them up. In so doing, minimize damage the rains will pour out across the island. For the news on PBCJ, I am Marlon Samuels. Parliamentarians threw their support behind the Electricity Electrical Work Registration and Licensing Regulations 2020. The regulations aims to digitize, modernize and transform the electrical inspection process as well as increased regulatory efficiency in relation to electricians. Through the passing of the Electricity Electrical Work Registration and Licensing Regulations 2020, the Government of Jamaica will facilitate the modernization and efficiency of the electrical, e electricity sector, increase compliance and industry safety, 
and improve Jamaica's competitiveness in doing business in the global sphere. The new act will see the revocation of the Applications for Licenses Rules 1929, the Electric Lighting Regulations 1922, the Electric Lighting Licensing of Electricians Regulations 1958, and the Electric Lighting Fees Regulations 1984. The Electricity Electrical Work Registration and Licensing Regulations 2020 also speaks to access to records in a digital space. Regulation 53, Madam Speaker, states that the regulator is to provide access to the digital system to the single buyer supply license self-generator or the owner uh, for the purpose of viewing the completion certificates and compliance certificates. Regulation 54 states that the single buyer or supply license or self-generator or the owner is to report an incident which has caused or likely to cause the loss of life or injury to a person or any damage to the premises to the regulator. Regulations for the Government Electrical Regulator, GER, set to govern the local electrical works industry is also part of the legislation. Oral health affects our ability to speak, smile, express emotions, our self-esteem and overall health. Poor oral hygiene is considered the other silent killer along with high blood pressure. Today, we begin a new weekly series with PBCJ's resident dental expert, H.D. Jazz. In this episode, what it means when your jaw clicks or pops. Hi, I'm H.D. I have another tip for you. Did you, did you hear that snap? Anytime you hear a snap, it's an indication that something is not so right. Many times my patients ask me, Doc, I hear these pops and clicks in my joint. Is that normal? Well, it's a pop and a click. Your body wasn't designed to pop and click. Your joint has an upper member and a lower member, and there's a little disc that sits in between. And usually when you hear a pop or a click, that disc is not in the right place. So is a pop or a click normal? Absolutely not. And if you are clicking or popping, it's time to visit your dentist. See you next time. COVID-19 continues to impact global oil prices, creating fluctuations in gas prices. For these and other market details, we go to Gabriel Thompson for the business report. According to the latest ex-refinery costs from Petrojam, motorists should see a decrease at the pumps in the prices of gasoline and diesel, effective Thursday, October 29. Following a decline of $1.53 each, 87 and 90 octane gasoline will be sold for $108.71 and $111.54 and per litre, respectively. Automotive diesel fuel will be sold for $109.28 per litre, following a decrease of $1.19, while ultra-low sulfur diesel is down by $1.06 and will be sold for $111.38 per litre. Kerosene saw a $1.71 decrease in price and will be sold for $83.94 per litre. Propane liquid petroleum will be sold for $46.32 per litre, down by $0.04. Cents. And butane liquid petroleum will be sold for $50.46 per litre after an increase of $0.23. Cents. Marketing companies and retailers will add their respective markup to these prices. In Wednesday's trading session, the JSE combined index declined by 1,544 points to close at under 400,000 units. Overall, market activity resulted from trading in 84 stocks, of which 38 advanced, 37 declined, and 9 traded firm. The junior market index declined by 29 points to close at under 3,000 units. 
Stocks Advanced 41834 Investments Limited, AMG Packaging and Paper Company, and Caribbean Cement Company. Stocks declined for Access Financial Services, Barita Investments, and Berger Paints Jamaica. Trading firm were Siboney Group Limited, KLE Group Limited, and Nutsford Express Services Limited. Wigton Wind Farm Limited Ordinary Shares was the volume leader with 6.6 million units, followed by Trans Jamaican Highway Limited with 2.8 million units, and Sagicor Select Funds Limited Manufacturing and Distribution with 1.3 million units. Now for the foreign exchange. The US dollar on Wednesday, October 28, ended trading at $146.43. The Canadian dollar sold for an average $111.79. The pound sterling traded for $192.08. And the euro ended trading at $176.46. Oil prices fell 4% on Thursday to their lowest since mid-June extending the previous day's sharp decline on the potential impact renewed coronavirus lockdowns will have on oil demand. Brent crude futures slid $1.48 to $38.16 a barrel. West Texas intermediate crude futures fell $1.52 to settle at $35.87 a barrel. And that does it for this edition of the Business Report on PBCJ. I'm Gabrielle Thompson. Now, if you're in the mood for drop-off-the-bone baby back barbecue ribs or slow-roasted grilled pork cooked Cuban style, then the place to be this weekend is Grill and Chill in Havendale, Kingston. That's where the Culinary Trail team will be sampling an array of delectable dishes with a sip of nature. Grill came about because my family has a farm and um, throughout all the years the meat price of pig was on a steady price despite the cost of feeds and the different inputs going up so um, out of doing plain dominoes and doing a little you know you just throw on a grill for your friends that was where chill and grill started actually three years ago where we use locally grown meats because sometimes I don't have enough on my farm so I have to buy from Copperwood or buy elsewhere but we use locally grown meats and then we season. Part of our secret is that Chef and I we season at least five days in advance so it gives the meat time to marinate and then as you know crispy pork which is one of our specialties is Oh Lord, how do you describe it apart from divine? But <laughs> when you're a pork lover, you know, crispy pork is the best way to have pork because it's like pork served with love. That is the Lakaja China box. That is the secret to the crispy pork. That is the secret to the crunchy crackling pork skin that everyone loves. It actually is, it was invented in Cuba, in Chinatown in Cuba mimicking how they cook pork you know like bury it in the ground and put the coal on top so the box the pork sits in the bottom and then you slow cook it so you get this moist well-cooked pulled pork effect awesome 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 in fact some people call it the magic of the box because it, it's it's magical one week a customer said i don't eat pork can you do salmon and we did grill salmon and the gentleman's report when he left here, he sent a picture. By the time he was at Manningsville Road, it was finished. So we are versatile. So we will cook what you want. But we do have steam fish. We do have roast fish. And we do have jerk chicken like you have never had it before. Because the box, again, there's magic in the box. Always, 
we have barbecue pig tail, which is a Jamaican favorite. Um, we have steam and roast fish. We have jerk chicken. We have chef specialty is barbecue honey glaze ribs. Now I promise you, come and taste the ribs. You will, it will be like no other. Seasoned with love and cooked and served with passion. We use all natural products and so it will be natural for us to do natural juices. I have a young, a young man who is a friend of my son who makes natural juices. Hi, I'm Nigel Brady. I am the founder of Nature's Sip and what we offer is a range, rather a myriad of flavors of 100% natural beverages, right? All homegrown produce and you have the choice of sweetened or unsweetened. Most customers tend to prefer the unsweetened because you, get, you actually feel the wellness in it at the first sip. So initially, that's the sip of change that we intend to offer or already offering to the diets of Jamaicans. So we are a family setting, although we can't have the gathering now because of Corona. But if you want to go someplace where you're comfortable and feel mamas love them, Chill and Grill is the place for you. What we have done because of COVID, everything has been converted to grab and go. So we invested in a warmer where we can keep the food warm. And then we then schedule pickups. So if you don't want to come out of your car, you can tell us what time you're coming and we'll meet you at the gate and deliver it. Or if you want it delivered at a small cost, we'll send it to you. If you are having a private gathering and you just want awesome grilled foods, or matter of fact, awesome any foods, you can call us and we will package it and deliver it for you. Because the idea is we grill and you chill. So you just bring the orders to us and we will deliver it to you wherever you are. So you have fun and stay safe in your neck of the woods. We now cook on every last Saturday, but food is ready from nine in the morning. So we cater to the man who wants to go bird bush or want to go beach, him can come early, pick up him crispy pork and head to the hills. Why chill and grill? If you want succulent pork, if you want pork that you will lick your fingers, if you think Kentucky is finger licking, come to chill and grill. I promise you, you're gonna get Food with love. Food served with love and with passion. We go now to stories from the region. No one is immune from the morbidity of COVID-19. This from Ministry of Health's Principal Medical Officer of Institutions, Dr. Mariam Richards, during Wednesday's COVID-19 virtual update, who confirmed this country has recorded its youngest COVID-19 victim. According to Dr. Richards, for confidentiality reasons, she was unable to share certain details, but noted the person did have underlying health conditions. This has been the youngest death from COVID-19. And while I am unable to give you the accurate age of the patient in the interest of patient confidentiality, I would like to remind the public that no age group is immune from the morbidity or illness, as well as the death or mortality from COVID-19. Dr. Richards called on members of the public to remain vigilant to protect themselves from contracting the virus. It is important to note that our last death, which was reported between the last media conference and this morning, occurred in a person who was under 25 years of age. While this was an exceptional situation and circumstance, and the person had a pre-existing medical conditions, this is a warning sign to our population that COVID-19 strikes all persons. Dr. Richards, in reiterating that it was still necessary to remain vigilant to avoid contracting the virus, also called for people to limit socializing. 
Let us avoid parties and get-togethers at this point in time. Remember, even if you are healthy and you think you do not have pre-existing medical conditions, you will be exposed and expose your close family members and friends who may have coexisting medical conditions. People are advised to maintain hand washing and social distancing at home, especially where there are elderly persons. Crystal Wilson, TTT News. And that's our package. Join us again tomorrow, same time, same place, for more news and sports right here on PBCJ, a people's station.